Juvederm in cheeks or nasal labial folds? I would like to soften my nasal labial folds and add some volume to my cheek area. Should I get Voluma in cheeks or Juvederm Ultra in nasal labial folds? Also, do I need filler in any other areas like around my chin? Thanks. Thank you for your question. You've submitted several photos and you're asking about the possibility of getting uh, Voluma in your cheeks or Juvederm Ultra Plus into your nasal labial folds as well as possibly getting some enhancement of the chin area. Well certainly I can sh share with you my approach to patients who ask similar questions in my practice. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon, fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and helping people with facial aging is a very significant part of my practice. And I would say that it's it, not just facial aging but often it's more about the genetics of facial volume. And so you've certainly done your research and you've learned about the specific indications for these different fillers. Now, to give you a little bit of guidance as to the approach, and this is what differentiates different doctors and how they do things, and everyone does things in their own way. But understandably, there is some degree of perception and confusion about what the best solutions are for these different anatomic areas. So I'll tell you a little bit about what I do when I see patients in consultation. I begin by taking photos and I take photos at the front view, three quarters, side views for both sides and then I place these photos up on the screen. And I help people understand where there are things that look like opportunities to improve in a more global sense and certainly I listen very intently to the priorities that the patient have. Now, you are familiar with Juvederm Voluma. We'll start with that filler. And yes, it has a, it has a very important role in, very, in, in different ways in the spectrum of options. But one of the things that I would caution you about any filler, when you talk about the volume in the cheek area, as well as in the nasal labial fold, is you don't want, you need to place the filler in the right level. So now what does that mean? Well, it is very common for patients to come in and discuss these concerns with me and then when I talk to them about different fillers, literally without any, any exception, patients will always say, well, I don't want to look like a chipmunk. I don't want to look like I'm all puffed out. And that's because they see way too many people that do look like chipmunks. And they look, see way too many very well-known people who look very swollen and very pillowy. So now you wonder, why, why, is, that, why is that an issue? And a lot of times, before, before explaining that, I would say that patients have also come who have gotten these fillers and they were either undercorrected, where they got just a little bit and they feel like they got nothing, or they got too much and they were unhappy with the results. And I think the, the, the basic issue is in the technique and placement. And there is an anatomic concept that takes a little bit of time to really understand, but I'll explain how I explain to my patients. When you look at your cheekbone area, there is essentially compartments that have to do with either volume loss, genetic volume deficiency, and have potential space. And what I say is what we're not doing is necessarily an augmentation, but rather we're making a correction to help restore facial harmony and balance. This way you avoid that puffy look. Now how do we get that nice youthful angularity. This is something that I really take issue with because a lot of my colleagues who believe that youthful appearance means smooth skin only often overfill the face and they end up looking more rounded. Well there's a concept called structural volumizing and structural volumizing is placement of these fillers, particularly in our practice we use 
long-lasting fillers such as Juvederm Ultra Plus and Juvederm Voluma, and we place it at the bone structure level. So literally below that soft tissue where people can become more rounded, but at the level of the bone where you actually can become much more defined. By placing at that level, then the cheekbones look more nice and angular and natural. And the skin actually glides over the cheekbone and doesn't have the physical weight when the, when the cheek becomes filled. A lot of times when people have a volume deficiency, a very well-meaning doctor will place this material in the soft tissue space and will create volume and they may look good on the chair, but then afterwards as the person talks and smiles, that material gets softer and just kind of kind of spreads out a little bit and then they look kind of strange and pillowy. So I think there's an opportunity in your situation to restore volume in the cheekbone. Yes, you can soften the nasolabial fold, but I'll tell you that in my experience, a lot of times once I restore cheek volume, the nasolabial fold becomes less important and less significant because it's a balance. If you look at younger people, a lot of young people have significant nasolabial folds, but they also have balance, they have volume. So there's something called the golden ratio where the upper part of the face is slightly wider than the lower part of the face. It's a 1.6 to 1 ratio. So when you create that, this, the, there is this natural perception of facial harmony. Now speaking of facial harmony, to address the issue of the chin, it is very, very interesting how a little bit of projection of the chin, which we've always done traditionally with chin implants, we can now do with thicker fillers such as Juvederm Ultra Plus and Juvederm Voluma, you can get some, also some balance, both from the front view of the length of the face to proportionally balance out the upper third, the middle third, and the lower third, as well as on the profile view. And that together can look very, very good. And again, it goes back to structural volumizing, putting the material at the level where I think it makes the most impact. One of the things about maturing is that there is significant bone loss. And that little bit of bone loss can result in a lot of volume loss. And so placing it in the right place really makes a difference. And, and from that perspective, I have to always emphasize, it's the fillers with the names that you know are really just tools that, that a skilled practitioner can apply to give an optimal outcome. And that communication between you and the practitioner and the methods employed are what ultimately create the best result. So meet with some doctors and get some opinions and, and learn about structural volumizing and I think you'll find that even if you take it in small steps, you'll find that this will be a very good strategy for you and I think you'll find you, you won't necessarily have to be specifically focused on the product but rather about the technique and the end result. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck and thank you for your question.